After begging God all her life to bless her with a child, in her last attempt, a woman discovers that her blessing would be much greater than she could ever have imagined. In a quiet countryside town, a middle-aged couple, Eve and Agnes, stood out. Not because of their wealth or social influence, but because they carried a silent sadness in their hearts, a hidden pain in the gentle smiles and welcoming looks they gave to everyone. Eve, a 53-year-old woman, had a strong and young spirit, despite the gentle marks of time on her face. Her skin had the lines of maturity, and her eyes carried the signs of a deep pain. Agnes, a 58-year-old man, was like a rock in the midst of chaos. Steady and firm, he endured the trials of life with admirable strength. The couple shared a harmonious life and a tender dream to be parents. However, that dream never came true. It had been 12 long years since the countless attempts, doctor visits, and fertility treatments just so they could have a child of their own. At that time, Eve was 41 years old, and doctors already considered the possibility of a pregnancy unlikely. Still, they didn't give up. Hope was still alive, despite all the statistics. I just wanted a chance, love. Eve whispered to her husband one night, her eyes full of tears. She was fondling an old photo of them, still young and full of hope, on their wedding day. The husband, with a heavy heart, took his wife's hand. I know, love, I know. They had accepted their fate, finding comfort in their careers, in each other's company, and in the warm, faithful presence of Max, their yellow Labrador. Eve dedicated her time and love to the students at the small school in town, where she was a teacher. Agnes, on the other hand, spent his days among the smell of oil and the sound of engines in the mechanical workshop he managed. The couple built a life together, but the absence of a child was like a gap that could never be filled, an echo that resonated in every corner of their home and their hearts. Often the poor woman would kneel in the room they had reserved for her baby who never came, pouring out her grief in fervent prayers. God, if you're listening, you know how much I long for a child. You know how much we want to be called mom and dad. Please, please, please. She pleaded, her words broken by silent sobs. The husband, peering through the doorway, felt his heart break into a thousand pieces for not being able to do anything about it. However, fate had a surprise in store for them and a dream was about to change everything. On a quiet night, the moon illuminated the small house with its silver light while the couple rested after a long day of work. The silence was only interrupted by the gentle snoring of Max and the sound of the leaves of the trees blowing with the wind outside. But Eve was restless, turning around in bed, unable to find the sleep that eluded her. Finally, the arms of weariness wrapped around her, taking her to a different place, a place of dreams and fulfilled wishes. She was in a park, but it wasn't just any park. It was the park she and her husband used to visit on Sundays. The green grass stretched as far as the eye could see, full of daisies and hibiscus. The trees were blooming, with their colorful flowers competing with the rainbow. The sun shone brightly in the sky, the clouds, like cotton, floated slowly, and the sound of childish laughter and cheerful calls filled the air. She looked down and saw small hands grabbing hers. She looked into the bright face of a dark-haired boy, on the other side, a girl with blonde curls looked at her. Behind them, three other kids ran, chasing a dog that looked a lot like Max. One of them looked at her, his eyes shining with joy and shouted, Mommy, look how fast I run. And she laughed, her heart overflowing with love. Another little girl would smile, admiring her and say, Mommy, play with me. And Eve took her in her arms, spinning her in the air while the little girl laughed. The others ran, calling each other, shouting, Daddy, to Agnes, who was playing catch with the kids and Max. It was a dream so real that she could feel the grass under her feet, the sun on her skin, the tiny hands of the children, the happiness that filled her being. It was something so real that she didn't even want to wake up. However, like all dreams, this one also ended. Eve woke up, breathless, feeling a sharp pain in her chest, the vision of that place still danced in her closed eyes, and the children's voices still rang in her ears. She turned over in bed, and her hands found the void where she'd expected to find a small child. And she started to cry. She sobbed, tears streaming down her face, wetting the pillow. 
The anguish was too much to bear. She felt like she had lost something precious, something she never really had. The pain of her imaginary loss was as real as the pain of the years of failed attempts. Agnes woke up next to her, alarmed. Love, what happened? He asked, holding her with his strong arms. She snuggled into him, crying, sobbing, and whispered to the heavens. Why can't I have children, God? Why can't I be a mom? The man stroked her hair, not knowing what to say, just offering comfort, his love, his understanding. So, after long conversations and much thought, the couple decided to do something they never thought they would. Try again. Are we? Are we really going to do this, love? Asked the woman, very emotional. I think we should, Eve. This dream has to be a sign from God. Agnes concluded. And if it doesn't work out, at least we went all the way. So, the two took their savings, which they were saving for retirement, and decided to invest in one last attempt at IVF. However, it was the doctor who tried to convince them otherwise, fearing that they would get hurt again when the procedure didn't give any results. Eve, you're past 50, dear. It's almost impossible. You must be in menopause or at least close to it. The chances, well, are very slim, dear. I know, doctor, but I don't regret this. I don't want to die knowing that I could have done more that I tried down to my last penny. We are willing to face this situation because I believe that if it is the Lord's will, it will work, even though I'm already 53 years old, she said, determined and with hope. So they performed the insemination and the couple returned home smiling. Over the days, Eve would often find herself in church, bending her knees and raising her hands to heaven. She prayed, letting her tears and pleas fall upon the altar. Please, God, give me this chance, she pleaded. Let me know the love of my own child. At night, she would kneel beside her bed, fold hands together, and pray fervently. Lord, I don't know what the future holds, but I know that with you by my side, I can face anything. Please bless me with the gift of motherhood. The Lord knows I want it so much. The mixture of hope and fear of failure consumed the poor woman. Every time she thought about the possibility that the fertilization might not work, a wave of dread washed over her. However, she remained strong, encouraged by her faith and the hope of becoming a mother. Agnes was beside her at all times. He shared her concerns, only he supported her in every decision. I'm with you, love. We're together every step of the way, he always said, taking her hand and holding her in a tight hug. The man was also consumed with the idea of being a father and his heart longed for a child. However, the days passed and nothing. No change in Eve's condition, no nausea, typical of pregnancy, nothing. The doctor, sad to share the news that it might not have worked out, was waiting for them at one of their appointments to talk about it. The couple arrived anxiously and the glint in their eyes faded as the doctor explained the results of the most recent tests. Unfortunately, Eve, well... However, at this very moment, she got up and ran towards the bathroom and unexpectedly vomited. Her husband rushed to help her, and the doctor called the nurses to redo the tests. It's not possible, he thought. After a few hours, when faith seemed to be running out, news arrived. It was like a ray of sunlight ripping through the dark clouds of uncertainty. The doctor approached them, who were waiting in the reception, and spoke the words they dreamed of hearing. Eve, you're pregnant. A scream of joy escaped the woman's lips. She looked at Agnes, tears of joy streaming down his face. The man wrapped her in his arms, sharing her joy and excitement. We're pregnant. We're going to have a baby. She screamed between sobs of happiness. Everyone in the clinic applauded, smiling. The nurse, who had been with the couple for years, was unable to contain her own tears. She was moved to see their joy, love, and miracle unfolding before her eyes. The doctor, even though he was still incredulous, had a twinkle in his eyes and a smile that hardly hid his emotion. Congratulations, we are really happy for you, said the doctor. In that moment, all the fear, all the uncertainty, all the pain were worth it. Eve was finally going to become a mother. The news that a 53-year-old woman had managed to get pregnant spread throughout the town, and the community, which followed the couple's struggle, shared their joy. We are going to be parents, love. We are going to have our own little miracle. 
Agnes celebrated. So, preparations for the arrival of the miracle baby began. Together, they chose a beautiful wooden crib, small beige clothes, and soft toys. With each piece of clothing they chose, they imagined their little child in it, creating a feeling of anxiety and happiness. However, even with the expectation of the arrival of a baby, the dream of Eve with several children continued. And each time she woke up, she wondered what it meant. Was it just restlessness or longing to see her baby's face soon? But this time, the woman didn't feel empty, like the first time. On the contrary, happiness enveloped her like a warm blanket. After all, she was expecting her baby, which she had been waiting for so many years. So, the day of the ultrasound to hear their little miracle's heart for the first time arrived. Agnes and Eve were radiant in the hospital, waiting for their turn. Their hearts beat frantically and their hands, intertwined, tightened. Eve, Agnes, you can come in, announced the doctor. They went in, got ready, and started the exam. Hmm, as we can see, your baby is growing healthy. The doctor stopped abruptly. What is it? Asked the parents. But for a brief moment, the silence in the room was piercing. The couple held their breath as the doctor, with a look of utter disbelief, reviewed the ultrasound screen. The routine of an ordinary consultation day had turned into a tense meeting and everyone's faces in the room reflected the anxiety of the moment. This can't be, he whispered, adjusting his glasses. Cleo, come here. Could you check this for me, please? The doctor called the nurse, confused and surprised. She walked over, looked at the ultrasound screen, and then at the doctor, a shocked expression on her face. But, but, is, is that possible? She whispered. What is it, people, for God's sake? Agnes was terrified, squeezing his wife's hand. There was a long, tense pause as the doctor collected himself and prepared to explain. He looked just one more time at the nurse and they both laughed, as if they were very nervous. Just listen, he said, and the sound of the equipment increased, and the parents began to hear the beating of their little one's heart. Oh my God, listen, love, it's beating, the woman said excitedly. However, suddenly, other heartbeats began to appear, which left the couple completely confused. Eve and Agnes exchanged nervous glances. Had they heard it right? Their breathing was fast and their pulses were pounding. The doctor turned to them, a nervous smile on his face, and said, You're going to need more cribs. What? The father asked with a visible surprise on his face. It's not just one baby, it's five babies. The nurse announced and laughed nervously as if she still couldn't believe what she was seeing. The room was silent. The couple was astonished, trying to understand what happened. Five? They looked at each other with teary eyes, and only then the penny dropped. They were expecting quintuplets, five little lives growing inside Eve's belly. Suddenly, everything made sense to both of them. The woman's dreams, the children running and playing, all those voices calling her mother. Those were her children, her five children. The parents looked at each other and then, with tears in their eyes, they laughed and hugged. It was more than they could imagine, more than they had prayed for. It was a miracle. Eve, still smiling, closed her eyes and whispered a prayer. Thank you, God, for this gift, for this miracle. I begged for one child and you, Lord, gave me five. I could never have imagined something like this, but I am so grateful. She turned to her husband, took his hand and placed it on her stomach. These are our children, love, our five miracles. Happiness filled the office, so intense it was almost palpable. The doctor and nurse shared their amazement and joy, and word spread through the hospital quickly. That day marked the beginning of a new journey for Eve and Agnes, a journey filled with expectations, challenges, but above all, an immense love for their five miracles. The whole city was in high spirits. The incredible case of quintuplets had attracted everyone's attention. The community mobilized and donations began to appear from all corners. Five cribs, five car seats, five times more diapers, bottles and clothes. Eve and Agnes's house quickly became a nursery in preparation for the new family members. And finally, after the best months of that couple's life, the day arrived when they would meet their children for the first time. The hospital was agitated, the nervousness palpable in the air. However, at the center of it all, the mother remained calm. 
She felt an inner peace, a certainty that could only come from faith. She felt that God was there with her, accompanying the realization of a dream that she always had, that she had always begged to come true. That way, one by one, five beautiful babies were born, three girls and two boys. They were given biblical names, Abigail, Miriam, Ruth, David, and Samuel. They were perfect, healthy, and so loved. Tears of joy soaked the faces of everyone in the room as each little one was placed in Eve's arms. Her husband was beside her, his face shining with admiration and love. He held his wife's hand firmly, and with his other hand he gently stroked the tiny hairs of their little children. We are blessed, Eve, he said, his voice trembling with emotion. She nodded, and her little eyes were shining with happy tears. Yes, uh, yes, we are. God has really blessed us. From that day on, that couple's life was never the same. They proved that even though they were 53 and 58 years old, this was not an obstacle to achieving their greatest goal, loving their children. It was busy days and nights, full of crying, diapers, and bottles. But above all, they were days of indescribable love and joy. And years later, in a sunny park, five children were happily running and playing. They called Eve and Agnes mommy and daddy, with their voices full of laughter, just like that dream that one day the woman had. The parents, sitting on a bench watching the little ones, exchanged a look of love and gratitude. The man held his wife close and smiled. We've been waiting a lifetime for this moment, haven't we? Yes, love. And it was so worth it. And there, under the warm sun, surrounded by his five miracles, Eve and Agnes lived their biggest dream, which once seemed impossible, but now was the most beautiful reality. A young black woman is approached by a policeman and told to open the trunk of her car. But what no one expected was what the officer would do immediately afterwards. The woman was shocked. The sun was rising beautifully over the New York skyline when Sharon, a young black woman of 27 years old, looked at herself in the mirror, adjusting her taxi driver's uniform with pride and excitement. It would be her first day at work, a milestone that represented not just a job, but a promise of a better future for her and her sick father. After months of intense searching, the opportunity to be able to provide for her family was a personal victory and a relief. Since her brother had enlisted, she was now the family breadwinner. That uniform symbolized her perseverance and hope. She walked down the stairs of her modest house to the small bedroom where her father, a middle-aged man in a wheelchair, spent most of his time. Dad, I'm leaving now. The girl announced with a smile. He looked at his daughter, his eyes reflecting a mixture of pride and concern. You'll do fine, my princess. Just remember to be careful. There are still people out there who can't see past the color of our skin. He advised in a shaky voice. Sharon approached and held the man's hands. Don't worry, Dad. Times have changed. We're in the 21st century now, and I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. I promise I'll come back with good stories she said, trying to convey confidence. Then she bent down, kissed her father on the forehead, and left the house, determined to face the world. Taking a crowded bus, Sharon headed for the cab company where she would be working. During the journey, she planned how she would spend her first commissions. The priority was clear, new, comfortable clothes for her father, and maybe, if there was anything left, a little treat for herself. She daydreamed about the smiles she would exchange with the passengers, the conversations she would have, and the city streets she would see. Arriving at the company, the young woman was greeted with enthusiasm. Other drivers and the management team greeted her, offering advice and good luck wishes. She listened attentively, absorbing every word and detail about the day-to-day -day running of the business. Then, they handed her the keys to the cab she would be driving, a moment she engraved in her mind as a symbol of independence. Taxi 126, my own cab. The girl was all excited, heading towards the company garage. The day was a succession of first rides, several passengers and routes around the city. Sharon strove to be the best in her new job, ensuring that every customer had a pleasant and safe journey. She chatted, smiled, and navigated the streets with a skill that seemed natural. Positive reviews, five stars began to appear on her profile, filling her with joy and satisfaction. She was making a difference, one passenger at a time. However, as the sun began to set, fatigue set in. 
Sharon felt every muscle in her body asking for a rest after the long hours of driving. She was ready for a well-deserved rest, eager to tell her father about all the day's experiences. But unexpectedly, at the end of that first day, she would witness something she had never thought possible. The young woman was driving through the quiet streets of the city, with the sky already tinged with the colors of dusk. She reflected on her first day at work, feeling a mixture of pride and exhaustion. He's going to be so happy, she thought, imagining her father's smile when he heard about her day. It was her father's birthday, and she wanted to do something special, buy him a new sweater that he needed so much. After years of hardship and dark days, the taxi driver wanted to bring a little joy into the life of the old man who struggled daily with the limitations of his health and his wheelchair. With these thoughts warming her heart, Sharon planned a quick stop at the mall before heading home. After she had returned the car to the company, she could already visualize the scene, them talking, laughing together, sharing the small victories of the day, and then her handing him his gift and seeing the smile it would bring to his face. But fate had other plans for the end of that day. As she dropped off the last passenger in a more secluded area of the city on her way back, she noticed the blue and red lights of a police car in her rearview mirror. A feeling of apprehension came over her when she heard the sound of the police asking her to stop the vehicle. Oh no, what now? She whispered, worried about what might have prompted the approach. The taxi driver pulled the car over to the side of the road and started looking for the car's documents and her driver's license, preparing herself for any questioning. The policeman approached the vehicle with a serious expression. Good evening, miss. Could you please get out of the car? He asked in a firm voice. Surprised and confused, Sharon asked still in the car. Hmm. Why? I have all the documents here with me. She couldn't understand the reason for the approach and felt a mixture of fear and indignation. Why was a simple journey home turning into something so complicated? The policeman, maintaining his posture, repeated his request for her to get out of the vehicle. Sharon, now with a touch of anger mixed with fear, replied, I'm just working, officer. I'm not transporting anything illegal if that's what you think. I didn't say that, miss. I just asked you to get out of the car, replied the officer, trying to keep the situation under control. The young woman felt the tension growing inside her. She was nervous, apprehensive, and a little frightened by the unpredictability of the moment. What was going to be an evening of celebration and good stories to tell was quickly turning into a disconcerting and tense experience. She took a deep breath trying to stay calm as she got out of the car to face what was to come. As Sharon stood there beside her cab, her heart pounding with apprehension, she couldn't help but remember the stories of her family Stories marked by unfounded discrimination that never seemed to end. Her mind was flooded with bitter memories, especially one that stood out painfully. The girl remembered her older brother, Mike, a dedicated worker who, on his way home from a long day's work as a mason, was approached by police officers. They were looking for a suspect, and he, being the only black person on the street at the time, was immediately considered a suspect. Accused of stealing a purse and belongings from a wealthy young woman who was in the area with her friends at a party, he had no chance to explain or defend himself. The officers immobilized him without hesitation, ignoring his protests and calls for justice. I didn't do anything, he said, terrified. But even so, he was taken to the police station and spent a whole night in jail, waiting for bail that he knew wouldn't come. His father was poor, and his sister Sharon was still a little girl at the time. He was scared, fearing he would never see the light of day again, worried about his paralyzed and sick father and his little sister who depended on him. After his parents had a car accident, which took his mother and left his father in a wheelchair, he was the only one who worked. However, the next day, by a stroke of fate, the real culprit was found, a close friend of the rich young woman herself. And when he was released and went to complain to the police, the men just told him dryly, You're lucky, kid. Be happy with that. And sent him on his way without an apology or any acknowledgement of the mistake they had made. This story had left an indelible mark on Sharon's family, teaching her from an early age that trust was a luxury that not everyone could have. But now, at 27, she saw the world a little differently. 
Society seemed more tolerant, not so prejudiced. Although she knew there were still a lot of bad people in the world, people who judged others by the color of their skin. She had always found the whole thing ridiculous. The idea that someone could be considered less or more suspicious simply because of their appearance was something she couldn't understand. However, standing next to her cab under the lights of the police car, the woman couldn't help but feel the weight of that family legacy, the shadow of distrust and prejudice that still hung over her. Sharon tried to keep calm, taking deep breaths as the policeman looked at her documents next to the car. She hoped this was just another routine stop, a credentials check, or something similar. But deep down, a part of her feared that the shadows of the past were about to repeat themselves in her own life. The policeman carefully examined the documents and then asked, Oh, so you work as a taxi driver for this company? Yes, sir. She replied, trying to keep her voice steady. I started today and I was just finishing my shift. The officer nodded and walked around the car, stopping behind the vehicle. Please open the trunk, he asked. Sharon felt a mixture of anger and fear surge through her body at that moment. She was exhausted, emotionally drained, and now this. Officer, with all due respect, I'm not carrying anything illegal in there. I'm working like any human being, and I'm very happy with my honesty. To prove it, I'm going to open it so you can see that there's nothing in there, she said with a firmness that surprised even herself. She walked over to the trunk, her hands shaking slightly with the tension of the moment. With a sudden movement, she opened the compartment. But it was at that moment that her eyes widened in surprise and horror. Oh my God, what, how, how did that get there? Sharon screamed, taking a step back with an expression of pure shock and fear on her face. Inside the trunk, coiled up and seemingly calm, there was a snake, a poisonous snake. Sharon didn't know how to react or what to do. She looked at the policeman, who quickly threw his uniform jacket over the animal, a quick action to protect both the woman and the animal itself. The young woman, still speechless, looked at the scene before her. How had that snake ended up in her trunk? She had never been around snakes, let alone transported one. Surprise and confusion were evident on her face. The situation was so absurd and unexpected that for a moment, all thoughts of discrimination, fear, and tension seemed distant. Sharon was shocked. The policeman concentrated on dealing with the unexpected reptile, and the silence of the night was briefly broken by the sounds of surprise and confusion. She didn't know how to react or what to think. She could only stand there, trying to process the fact that a snake had been found in her car at the end of her first day at work. It was a turn of events that the girl could never have imagined, a story that would surely become incredible to tell. But at that moment, all she felt was fear and disbelief. With skill and calm, the policeman managed to trap the snake, using his jacket to tie it up like a makeshift sack. Sharon, still in a state of petrification, watched the man's every move, trying to process the surreal sequence of events. Still trembling, she asked, How, how did you know? The idea that that snake had been in the car with her all day without her realizing it filled her heart with fear and relief at the same time. She thought of the dangers she could have run into, the possibility of the animal escaping into the vehicle and causing an accident. Good Lord, my passengers in the back seat. If the snake bit them, I'd be done for. She thought in anguish. The policeman, realizing the girl's state of shock and fear, responded gently. I saw part of the snake's tail sticking out of the trunk. There was a small crack, and I didn't want to cause a fuss. So I just asked you to get out of the car first and then open the compartment. Sharon felt a wave of relief, and at the same time, a hint of embarrassment at having thought that the man was discriminating and suspicious of her for no reason. I'm sorry, officer. She said, her voice still shaky. I thought, I just... He interrupted with an understanding smile. It's okay, my dear, I understand. Many of my co-workers go overboard and that's wrong. No one can judge someone just because of their color or anything else. We're here to protect and serve everyone, no exceptions. The police officer then called the animal control department. Within minutes, a team arrived to collect the snake and take it to a safe place where it could be properly cared for. The taxi driver watched, still trying to understand how it all happened, but grateful for the help and the safe outcome for everyone involved. After the rescue team had taken the snake away, Sharon said goodbye to the policeman, 
thanking him once again for his help and respectful treatment. She got into her car, a little shaken, but relieved that everything had ended well. Now she had to take the car back to the company, call it a day and finally return home, where she could relax and tell her father about her unexpected adventure. On her way back, Sharon reflected on the day's events. From the excitement of her first day at work to the unexpected scare with the snake, it was a day she would never forget. She wondered what else life had in store for her, but for now, she just wanted to return to the welcoming arms of her home. After the unusual experience with the venomous creature, the taxi driver was driving back to the company, still trying to digest the events of the day and the most important thing she couldn't keep quiet. How the hell did that snake get there? As soon as she arrived, the young woman quickly reported the snake incident to her manager and colleagues. Everyone was surprised and worried about the situation, but one of the employees confessed something that shed light on the mystery. He admitted to using the cab for a camping trip at the weekend and mentioned that it could have been there that the snake got into the trunk without him realizing it. The justification seemed plausible, given that he had passed through areas known for the presence of snakes and other wild animals. Faced with this revelation and the possibility that Sharon had filed a complaint for negligence and exposure to danger, the company decided to compensate her financially. They offered her a significant sum as a form of compensation for the trauma and risks she faced walking around with a poisonous animal all day. The girl, although still shaken, felt relieved and grateful for the company's consideration and recognition. With the extra money in hand, plus the day's commission, she felt a wave of happiness and relief. She decided it was time to fulfill the promise she had made to herself, to buy her father a new sweater, a birthday present that she knew would make him happy. She went to the mall, carefully picked out the sweater, and then went home, anxious to see the old man's reaction. When she arrived, she entered the house with a beaming smile and the gift in her hands. Dad, you won't believe the day I had. She began, telling the whole story while her father listened attentively. At the end of the story, she handed the man the sweater and wished him a happy birthday. The man smiled with gratitude and surprise. What a crazy day, my child, but look what you've achieved. I love the sweater. You didn't have to, thank you, he said, admiring the gift. They both laughed together, sharing the moment of joy and relief after a day so full of twists and turns. As night fell and the house filled with chatter and laughter, Sharon was happy. That crazy day was a reminder that life is unpredictable, full of surprises and challenges, but also opportunities and moments of happiness. She learned that things aren't always what they seem, and that sometimes the scariest moments can lead to happy and surprising endings. With that lesson in mind, the young taxi driver was ready to face whatever the future held, with the same courage and optimism that had guided her through that remarkable day. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.